Painting in Leonardo da Vinci. What is the nature of painting? What are the principles of painting? What is the proper end of painting? What does Leonardo tell us? In his treatise on painting, Leonardo tells us that painting is philosophy. He presents painting, in effect, as the philosophy of the eye. It is philosophy <coughs> that studies the appearance of things, the way things appear to us <coughs> in nature, which is to say, the way things appear naturally to us. The natural appearance of things is what the painter and the drawer is study. Now, philosophy aside from painting, formal philosophy, studies the inner life of things, whereas painting is a philosophy that studies the way the inner life of things manifests itself. Well, what are the principles of painting? Well, these, what Leonardo calls the principles of painting, are basic geometrical principles. So we have the point, the line, the surface, and the body, the body which is feigned, because painting is the imitation of the bodies. And in a very pedestrian sense. But of course, the end is not pedestrian. And that is why, for Leonardo, doubt is a key ingredient in painting. This, in harmony with his teacher, um, his teacher's lesson, and his teacher being Dante, or fellow uh, poet. For indeed, painting is also poetry. He himself, Leonardo, states this. And so, in the element of doubt, painting is always going beyond appearances. For it seeks the manner in which the inner life of things manifests itself. That manner is not in itself an appearance. Now, how do we go about as painters studying the manner in which the inner life of things manifests itself? Well, the painter's mind must not be distracted by any discourse that is not the discourse of things themselves. These are the, the terms that Leonardo adopts to tell us that there is a discourse of things and the painter's mind must adapt to that discourse, open itself to that discourse, be very, um, shall we say, flexible, so as to be able to take the shape of things as they appear, or rather the character of those shapes. Now, these are the terms in which Leonardo da Vinci speaks of painting. And uh, we can go over some of the passages that are most pertinent from the treatise on painting. Well, 
at some point we read of the first principle of the science of painting. What what does what does Leonardo mean by the science of painting? He means that philosophy is a science. He means that that a painting is philosophy. He means that therefore it is knowledge, scienza. He says scienza della pittura. So it is knowledge. There is a knowledge of things. There is a coming into um, communion with things. So what is the principle of the science of painting? It is the point. The second is the line. The third is the surface. The fourth is the body. Hmm? Um, in the body he says che si veste di tal superficie that is dressed in surfaces in the surface that um, constitutes the third principle of painting. And and this body, um, corpo, is what um, that that is made of surfaces, is what uh, is feigned by the painter. Now, why is he feigning it? One might ask. And the the feigning is there clearly if we consider the question of doubting um, that 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 uh, Dante raises, the feigning is there to help us understand, uh, to help others, to yeah, non-painters, uh, have a sense at least, or partake in the inner life of things, and of course also in the the manner in which, so the distance ultimately, between the inner life and the appearance of things. Um, more to be said about this. Now, moving to another passage, he says, well, what kind of study is to be, um, to be undertaken in youth? He says, lo studio dei giovani the, the study among youth who desire to uh, become professional in the sci the imitating imitative sciences of all figures of the works of nature has to be about drawing accompanied by shadows and lights that can that are convenient which is to say which somehow conform they're adapted adapt to the place where those figures he says are situated now again <clears throat> the terms of of leonardo's uh, statements are pointing us in the direction of a natural confrontation with things and he will, at some point, and we'll see this, emphasize that the painter is to be solitary. I mean, maximizing this, um, this habit of being alone with things. To listen to the discourse of things. This is a classical theme. Huh? Things have their own voice. What rule, he says, well, he has at some point, he has a, a thought about this, but what rule should we give young, even children, painters? He said, well, one might expect something, um, perhaps today one might expect something uh, very insightful and, uh, well, perhaps even uh, unique. Um, he says, well, if you want to um, have uh, the vera notizia delle forme delle cose, which is to say the true, um, shall we say, um, well, we could even say news, right, of, in other words, the the sign, the true sign of the form of things, 
right? The way they show themselves. So in other words, if you want to uh, come to terms with the way, the form of things, yeah, as they appear, as they appear, comincerai dalle particole di quelle e non andare alla seconda se prima non hai bene nella memoria e nella pratica la prima. In other words, you start from a particular uh, appearances and go from one to another, but before you go to the second, you should keep the first in memory, in your memory. In other words, don't take things for granted as they appear to you. And so this is a somewhat of a rule that we could say almost of common sense. Yeah? If, you're, if you're studying appearances, don't take anything for granted and remember what you see because ultimately you are there to um, now in a very superficial uh, level we could say there to imitate those appearances. But what is at stake here is the the representation of course a painting represents the representation of things insofar as they emerge from an inner life so that the already we have a sense that the imitation in other words a painting is to point us to that hiatus between the inner life of things and the manifestation. Now, this is right. One might object, and object today that this is quite mystical and quite strange and it cannot help us. Well, according to Leonardo, this was the way to go in painting and in teaching painting and in learning painting. Um, he Leonardo adds that the, the painter, which is to say um, the, the drawer, must be, or deve essere, so he ought to be, he must be, solitary. And massime, which is to say to the utmost, quanto è intento alle speculazioni e considerazioni. Where he is bent upon speculations and considerations. Che continuamente apparendo dinanzi agli occhi danno materia alla memoria di essere bene riservate. Considerations that continually appearing before the eyes give matter to memory to be well kept. So whatever these speculations, these, one could even say these insights, um, that the eyes perceive Whatever these are, these are to be preserved in memory as material. It's the material of memory. These speculations and considerations. But this it occurs, this retaining in memory, occurs best in solitude. E, tu, e se tu sarai solo, he adds, tu sarai tutto tuo. And if you will be alone, solitary, you will be altogether your own. And you won't be, he goes on, accompanied by, um, even by one single companion, in which case you'll be halfway, half yourself, and of course, even it would be even worse if you were um, in a company of many. 
tanto meno quanto sarà maggiore la indiscrezione della tua pratica. So, and you'll be even less of yourself to the extent that your, your practice will be indiscreet. What, what, does, what, what does Leonardo um, seek to, to tell us here? Well, there is to be care in seeing all things. And seeing entails here speculations and considerations. There is a care for the way in things the way things manifest themselves. What kind of care is this? And what does it really uh, involve? Well, as noted, it involves a questioning of the manner in which things emerge out of themselves. So the inner life of things becomes an outer manifestation. And so when we study the manifestations, when we study the appearances, the we don't just see an empty shell, we see a sign, right? hence the speculations and considerations, a sign of the manner in which things emerge from the unseen, from an inner life. Ultimately, incidentally, for Leonardo, this is the inner world of the mind. But let us have him speak uh, about these, um, these problems. In che modo deve il giovane procedere nel suo studio? So how is the young student to proceed yeah, in his study? And the first thing he says is that the mind, la mente del pittore, the mind of the painter, must continually, del continuo, in a continual manner, as a stream, in a continuum, transmute itself in as many discourses as are the figures of the notable objects that appear before him. So these are the precise terms that Leonardo adopts. And to those to those uh, figures he is to fermare il passo e notarle. So halt his Step, as it were, and note them down. E far sopra esse regola, regole, considerando il luogo, le circostanze, i lumi e le ombre. And so, over them, make rules, rule, rule, as, as in rulers. Yeah? So, in other words, establish some kind of rules. Um, considering the place, luogo, the circumstances, the, the lights, and the shadows. Now you say, well, what, what, what is he going to do? Is, uh, uh, why doesn't Leonardo establish these rules for us? Well, he has examples of what he means by that, and, and they are not uh, you know, rules that very often uh, uh, we could uh, we can we could we're, we're likely to be used to today. Um, there are rules that that are rules of common sense. One might even say, but um, comune senso, as he calls it, but rules that reflect immediately that um, that mode of presentation of things. What is key here is that the mind of the painter is to continually transmute, transmutare itself in tanti discorsi, 
quante sono le figure? So every figure has its own discourse, its own way of mm, mm, appearing. So it is things that manifest themselves. And the mind is to, to adapt to that discourse of that thing that appears and must adapt to all things variably according to their own discourse. And so at that point, he says, well, the mind is to stop, note that discourse, and say, well, okay, and now he can adapt, he can come up with a kind of way, a rule, a ruler, yeah, a way of painting it adapted to that discourse. Right. So the rule is not coming from anywhere in the abstract or any one. It comes directly from that thing that is seen. And so there's there's no teacher that will give you a rule to paint a young woman, for example, or an old woman. Um, and I mentioned the old young woman because well, there is a, there is a little passage which we, which is appropriate to to refer to to give an, an example of what what sort of um, approach Leonardo has to to um, well um, precise figures. Del modo di studiare, on the way to study. He says, well, the, the painter is to study with regola, con regola, which is to say um, with a ruler and not leaving, so in non lasciare cose, without leaving anything, out of memory, che non si metta la memoria. So there is utmost care in everything that he sees. He is exercising memory as he looks. So the exercise of memory is very important. Um, what is memory? This is, this is a big question. And, um, you know, for St. Augustine, Memory ultimate, ultimately is, is the abyss of the divine mind. And um, in, in this respect, to place back in memory is to place back into the mind of God. But let us see. E, e vedere che differenza è fra le, so, fra le membra degli animali e le loro giunture. So, to go back to the, the problem of what the, the painter is to do he is to study with a ruler, retaining all in memory, or bringing, rather, placing it in, in memory, mettere alla memoria, and see what differences, or what difference there is among the parts, the limbs of the animals and their uh, articulations. Um, Proportions, yes, one might say, but the difference that there is. So everything has its way of presenting itself, its own discourse. The arm has its discourse, or the head has its discourse, and and all of these discourses we adapt. The eye adapts to the mind. The mind of the painter adapts to. Um, retaining them in memory, placing them in memory, so clearly as to get to something. Why are they remembered? Well, to recreate them, one could say. Certainly, um, that that is an appropriate point. But again, as we'll see in a passage, what is key here is not the production of work, but that which the work is pointing to. 
And ultimately, that pertains to, um, well, the inner life of things, um, but also the source of all things, and, and indeed the nature of the mind. But this is um, to, to go too, too fast here. Um, L'ingegno del pittore vuole essere a similitudine dello specchio. And so the, the mind, the intellect, ingegno, the, the genius in the sense of the ingenuity, uh, the mind, the intellect of the painter, wants to be a similitude. In other words, it wants to be like, resemble a mirror. The mind of the painter is to be a mirror. The mind of the painter is to be a mirror. Il quale sempre si trasmuta, which always transmutes itself, nel colore di quella cosa che gli ha per obietto in the color of that things, thing that he has, that the painter has as object, that is to say, what is before his eyes. E di tante similitudini si empie quante sono le cose che gli sono contrapposte. That is to say, um, in the color of all those similitudes, um, that are before him, huh? of all those things um, before him. Now, this is, uh, we find a precept right, for the painter. He says, well, and here we get a sense of, of, of what painting is finally all about. Quel pittore, although it, you know, it's just a a, here we find a, uh, an indication. Quel pittore che non dubita poco acquista. The, that painter who does not doubt acquires little. When the work surpasses judgment, the judgment of the operator, the painter, this operator acquires little. But when the judgment surpasses the work, Supera l'opera, essa opera mai finisce di migliorare, never ceases to improve, se l'avarizia non l'impedisce, if avarice does not impede it. In other words, the painter is not to be affected by avarice. Um, he has to give himself to doubt. So when the mind of the painter transmutes itself, in the mode of manifestation of things, shall we say. It does so in the element of doubt. Now, this is fundamental. Um, Dante himself uh, emphasizes this problem, in, no, most notably in Paradiso, in Paradise, where he, ri he rises in the element of doubt. Uh, he has replaced suspicion, ordinary suspicion, with doubt. And um, he moves from one form to another, perhaps. He clarifies that form, or, or rather, he, 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 he dives into a, an ever more intimate, shall we say, uh, communion with form through doubt, until, well, there is a communion with, with the divine mind. Um, let's see if there are some passages that uh, were that noted down and that, were, that I skipped in um, referring to them. Um, let's see, no. But uh, there was a passage that, uh, that I did not uh, here, copy down uh, about uh, the, the way of representing women 
for instance, a young woman, um, well, I'll, I'll just paraphrase here, but a young, how are we to pa paint a young woman, for instance? Right? Well, a young woman is to be painted with, a, you know, with her uh, head bowing a bit and the legs together and the posture. He is describing a posture of piety, proper, appropriate for the young woman. And this is the way a young woman is to be. I mean, obviously, he's, he's not speaking about um, some kind of a, a prostitute. He's speaking about a young woman as she is to be, and a, what is proper. And then an old woman will be, one could think about characters from, from literature, right? But, but even a, a, a farmer, think of a, so she'll obviously be, um, she will have lived through a lot and she will be more ready, prompt to action, to, to do things. Um, there, in other words, his insistence is upon highlighting the discourse of characters. Here's the old woman. Here's the old man. How is he? How, how does he behave? And um, what is the way of the old man? What is the way of the cat? What is the way of the dog? What, you know, what is the way of air? So all of these features that the eye being the greatest of, of our organs um, encounters are to be examined are to be studied, are to be uh, even uh, through uh, consideration, through speculation. They're, they're to be placed into memory. So return to the mind, memoria, ultimately from the same root as of mind, mens. Now, the references to God are tied to the understanding of painting as philosophy. So, um, again, uh, Leonardo uh, states uh, unequivocally, he says, painting is philosophy. La pittura è filosofia, perché la filosofia tratta del moto aumentativo e diminutivo. Now, what does, and then he goes on, speaking of, um, of, of uh, philosophy being concerned with the the inner life, the virtue of things. Um, now, philosophy treats the augmentating and diminishing motion. And so things augment and diminish. There's something about things that, you know, that, that increases and diminishes. And painting is looking at this size and uh, distance, and, you know, um, all of this colors fade, and, um, because painting is the philosophy of the eye. Um, and this is all uh, really about the nature of things, so that he who blames Biasima painting blames nature. You say, well, why does Leonardo speak about blaming painting? Right. Well, he who says, well, who, painting is not important, is really saying that nature is not important. Because, he says, le opere del pittore, because the works of a painter represent the works of nature herself. And for this, il detto biasimatore, a carestia di sentimento, the, the said blamer is lacking in sentiment. So nature is affecting our, well, essentially the source of our sentiment, what we sense. So when we lack sense or sentiment, um, we are shut to nature. And thus we see no point in painting because 
course, painting is this openness to nature. And um, we, we have this experience of painting as, well, being philosophy, si prova la pittura esser filosofia, because she treats the, um, the motion of bodies in the prontitudine delle loro azioni, in the readiness to action, and philosophy, ancora lei, si estende nel mondo. Uh, philosophy herself extends in this motion. This motion for philosophy, one might say philosophy proper, is the inner motion of things. Painting is concerned with the way this inner motion manifests itself. Hence the promptitude of the actions of bodies yeah, that he refers to. And at some point, Leonardo uh, has uh, some shares some uh, thoughts on how painting embraces the surface, figures and colors of natural bodies and philosophy. Um, e la filosofia sol se stende, extends solely to their natural virtues. So again, the inner life. Um, now, Painting extends to the surface, the colors, the figures of any created, anything created by nature, qualunque cosa creata dalla natura, e la filosofia, the philosophy, penetrates within, penetra dentro ai medesimi corpi, within those same bodies, considering in them their own virtue. Virtues. And, and of course, is not doesn't remain satisfied with that truth that che fa il pittore, that um, con quella verità che fa il pittore, che abbraccia in sé la prima verità dei tali corpi, perché l'occhio meno si inganna. So it is not satisfied with that truth that the painter, well, this could mean that that makes the painter or that the painter makes, which embraces within itself, the first truth of those bodies, um, insofar as the, the, the eye um, is, is, the, well, is the organ that fools itself the least. So, in other words, even if the, you know, the, the eye is, is pretty reliable compared to all other organs, philosophy proper is not satisfied with, um, with the of course, the, the manifestation of things, and even with the way things are manifest, manifest themselves. Um, he says, well, um, he adds, Leonardo, that he who disparages painting does not love philosophy, neither philosophy, in fact, nor nature. And if you do disparage painting, which is la quale è sola imitatrice di tutte le opere evidenti di natura, which is the only and alone um, imitator of all the works evident in nature, or of nature, the evident op works of nature, certainly you will disparage a subtle invention uh, which, with philosophical and subtle speculation, considers all the qualities of forms. Let us move forward and see that um, finally painting is the nephew of nature. Um, for uh, tutte le cose evidenti sono state partorite dalla natura. All evident things have been given birth to by nature. So nature is generating these things that appear, dalle quali cose è nata la pittura. And from these manifestations of nature, painting is born. Adunque, rettamente, thus, correctly, um, to speak uh, in a, 
uh, well, we could say righteous, but I mean, uh, straightforward manner and, and uh, to speak well, ultimately. La chiameremo, we will uh, call painting nipote di essa natura e parente di Dio. And uh, with this statement, uh, Leonardo is echoing Dante in Inferno, canto, uh, the, the 10th canto of Inferno. Dante refers to art as a Dio quasi e nipote, as being almost nephew to, um, or grandchild, perhaps even we could say, um, to, to uh, God. Right? Uh, what does Leonardo say that we just read? Um, we will call her uh, well, either nephew or grandchild at any rate, uh, because it goes through some, there's a step, so we have nature, we have the appearance of things, and then and then painting is born of born of that appearance. Nata, it says. It's not made. It's, it's born through this openness of the eye to what is given. Um, and of course, with rigor, with ruler, and so forth, but that is always a to, to match the manner of the presentation of things according to the situation. And so we can call painting um, uh, you know, a nephew or a grandchild of nature, but he adds in parente di Dio, parente di Dio, and therefore relative of, of God. So art is the nephew of God or relative of God, we see already in Dante, and why is that? Well, since God um, is present in nature, well, we could even say if God is present in nature, where do we find God? Well, if we just leap carelessly into nature, we're not going to find God. Uh, mechanically into nature, we won't find God. So where do we find God? Well, uh, this is the key that, that, um, that Leonardo offers us. Um, for... Uh, Painting cares about things that are evident, that have been produced, generated, partorite, given birth to, uh, by nature, as signs of, we could philosophically uh, suggest, signs of the inherence of nature and God. And in that respect, uh, painting is a kind of tribute to divine providence. Now, painting surpasses says Leonardo, all human works per sottili speculazioni appartenenti a quella, in virtue of its subtle speculations that belong to it. The eye, as it is called, the window of, of the soul, right, he, he adds, is the principal way through which the common sense which is the imagination, il comune senso, can most copiously, fulfillingly, and magnificently consider the infinite works of nature. These are his words. Uh, considerare le infinite opere di natura. Il pittore, he adds, is 
Lord of all sorts of people and of all things. Signore d'ogni sorta, di gente e di tutte le cose. Il pittore padrone di tutte le cose che possono cadere in pensiero all'uomo. He is Lord of all things that can befall the thought of man. For if he has the desire to see beautiful, beautiful things that uh, he can fall in love with, well, he is Lord, he is the il Signore di generarle. He is, he is the Lord capable of generating them. And if he wants to see monstrous things that scare us, well, or... Uh, funny things and ridiculous, ridiculous things or, or even um, worthy of compassion so, uh, he is uh, the Lord um, he is their Lord and creator in other words he is there to represent what people represent in, in the even in the political sense, um, what people do not ordinarily, ordinarily have care to notice. Um, so he, as, as the ancients would, would have it, he is a poet who is um, guiding uh, other people, people of all kinds, to live in accordance with, with nature in the sense that, um, that nature is the which is to say in accordance with um, a natural order of things, or in accordance with the way they are intended to be by God. Now, um, let's see if we can find a uh, some passage that can help better understand what was said, what has been said so far. Il pittore per sé senza aiuto di scienza o altri mezzi va immediate all'imitazione di esse opere di natura. The painter, on his own, without help of any science or any means, goes immediately to the imitation of those works of nature. This is crucial. And um, the, the point is stressed further, where Leonardo adds, notes that the supreme defect of painters is to replicate themselves in all things. So that all things that they paint look like the painter. So... They all have the same character of the painter. Instead of the painter being a kind of mirror, right? His mind being a mirror of the way things manifest, manifest themselves. And finally, here is the passage that I paraphrased earlier. He says, well, uh, how are we to... Uh, figurare le donne how are we to draw the, you know, the figure, represent the figure of women he says well, women must be uh, well, represented, figured literally he says figurare with acts of um, vergogna vergognosi, atti vergognosi in other words of, of um, a sense of shame uh, the legs 
uh, tightly uh, placed tightly together, arms uh, held together, raccolte insieme, uh, heads lowered and bent uh, in traverso. So, um, in a sense of, giving a sense of modesty. Um, and that, we could see this as uh, an example of what was mentioned earlier. So, this is the way you know, women are to be. Or, or are in, a, in, in God's mind, how they're, they are by nature. So women are not vulgar by nature. That if there is uh, a vulgar woman, she has betrayed her nature. Right. So this is um, the general uh, um, orientation of Leonardo's education of the painter, this is what it's all about. So it, it is about care, it is about uh, fundamentally uh, listening, opening oneself to the way of things um, as they derive from nothing falling short of the divine mind.